Thank you, Jesus. Okay, got your Bibles? We're, uh, we're, we continue our series today on how to solve problems. Amen. And uh, we all go through times when we don't know quite how it works. Uh, are, are you hearing me? Put, maybe you're putting something together and you're not quite going together right. And, you know, you need a little help sometimes. Right? Is it just the men that need help? Or all you ladies got, you you already know how to do it. And, and you're trying to help us men get it done. Amen. Uh, we need help. I, I found that out a long time ago. Well, not too long ago. But it was seven years ago when I found out I needed help. Amen. And uh, in our in our in our maleness, we think, oh, we don't need any help. You know, we got this. Yeah, but how many know we all need some help? Yeah, yeah look at somebody next to you and say, oh, you really need some help. Go on, look at say, you really need some help. My God, you need some help, bro. Boy, you need some help. Come on. Pastor, <laughs> you need some help. Hallelujah. Amen. And so sometimes we, in, in our men's breakfast, we had kind of, kind of a devotion about that. Not, not being quite sure how to put it all together sometimes and how to fix this or how to do that. And, and the Lord is wanting to help us so that we can get things together. Amen? Amen. And keep it together. Things that we're not sure about. Praise God. And so we're, we're in this series. I believe God is addressing problems, situations that need solving, need resolution. Amen. Anybody with me or am I the only one that needs a resolution and a solving in some areas? Amen. I think we're all in this together because we all have problems. That's right. And we saw that last week. And so the Lord is moving specifically. God has different times. Not that he won't always have that, but he has different times when he moves in special areas and he sees special need. Yes. And I believe that we're in such a time as that right now where he sees that there are some really serious problems. Yes. Come on, somebody, am I talking to anybody? Yes. Serious situations, some are very long-term situations. Yes. Yes. You don't really know how to solve it. Amen. How I many know there's not a problem God can't solve? Amen. And not a problem God can't help you solve. That's right. And show you how to solve it. Amen? After you've exhausted all of your energy and efforts and sometimes money and whatever it takes, emotion and whatnot. And sometimes we'll just, I'll just ask Holy Spirit to help me. Amen. Show me how to do this. And you know, the Holy Spirit is so beautiful. It isn't very long. He's showing me just how to do that. Amen? Matter of fact, I've learned to ask Him to help me before I get into it. Come on. I mean, when you get into something, it can become a bucket of snakes real quick. Come on, Pastor. Huh? Even something yeah. I know how to do, I still want to depend on Him. Amen? I say, Lord, I know how to do this. I got to do this. But I still need your help. Yeah. I still need your help because I know what the enemy can do to mess things up. And take something that should be easy and make it something that turns into something else. Amen? Especially with plumbing and things, amen. Some of us are not mechanically inclined. Uh, matter of fact, some are mechanically declined. Everybody has their gifts, amen. amen. Some of the some of the ladies are more mechanically inclined, and uh, so it, it, thank God if you're mechanically inclined, uh, help somebody that's not, amen. Hopefully, you're married. If you're married, you're married to somebody that's mechanically inclined. If you both decline, then well, it's going to cost you some money, amen. All right. That's to help some of you single ladies out when you're looking for the right water of guys. Amen. Hallelujah. For our Facebook and uh, uh, YouTube audience, we welcome you and we're glad that you're tuning into this series, this message. We pray God's blessing on you and uh, God bless you for being part of this worship celebration. Seven keys that will help us to solve and resolve matters that we all face from time to time. If you got your Bibles, our key verse is Numbers, the 21st chapter, Numbers 21. Numbers, the 21st chapter, the 4th verse. Amen. Keys that will help us to solve matters. Ah, oh, way to go. I'm glad there's not a situation of matter that God can't solve. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. I mean, can believe that for our nation and our world. Huh? Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, there's some big problems out there. Yeah. I said there's some big, serious, dangerous problems. Yeah. Jesus said that in these end times, it'd be perilous times. He woke up the 
or look up the word verily, it's going to scare you half to death. So I'm not even going to go in it. But I thank God that he said, fear not. He's, he's got this. Amen? But these are serious times. And we're praying for our leaders. That God will give them wisdom on how to solve problems without plunging the whole world into another World War III. Amen? Are you hearing me, church? There is a time to pray. It's now. Ask God to protect our leaders and to give them wisdom. Amen? And God says, if you lack wisdom, then I think we need to pray for wisdom every day. Amen? Come on. Wisdom. Wisdom. Discernment. Somebody say discernment. Discernment. discernment wisdom, and courage. Real quick, discernment is to discern what's really happening. Not just what you see, but to discern by the Spirit of God helping us what's really going on here. Amen? I may know what's going on sometimes, but you see it's not really what is going on. There's other things, other factors involved. So once God shows you what's going on, then we need the wisdom to know what to do about it. Amen? How many of you know you've had situations where you don't know what to do? You know what the situation is, but you don't know what to do about it. Come on. Talk to me. Amen. And then when God gives us wisdom and we know what to do about it, you can still know what's wrong and know what to do about it. That may not still not have any, any results. You need the third key, and that is courage. You need courage to do what needs to be done. Amen. So much our courage. Courage. Courage for the discouraged. Amen. So I thank God for discernment, I thank God for wisdom, and I thank God for courage that he's giving to all of us in this day of, uh, of really uh, uh, some serious problems that we're encountering uh, in our world today. Amen. And how many can see that as hope? Amen. Hope for today. Strength for today. And bright hope for tomorrow. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord. Amen. Can you say amen to that? Verse 4 in chapter 21. It says, And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people were very much discouraged because of the way. Or the people were very discouraged. Or they became very discouraged on the way or because of the way. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we speak today life. We speak encouragement. We speak courage. We thank you that we're in a, in, in a serious time in this 2000s, uh, 2019 going into 2020. Lord, we are, we're just thanking you that you meant for us to be here during this time. Father, you saw us from the foundation of the world. I thank you that you made us prepared and ready. We're prepared and ready in ourselves by your word. And to hear your word and to come and, and, and receive what you have. We thank you that you knew we would have what it takes to live in this hour. So we thank you that we can live with hope, Father, knowing we have a future, and without fear. We praise you for it now. Bless your word. In Jesus' name, your word is blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. So we see here, amen, we see again in our text that for the Israelites to reach the promised land, they had to go around the land of Edom. We looked at that last time. I uh, won't we'll go back into it. He saw the land of Edom, the Edomites. But really, Edom represents obstacles that we all face in our journey. Amen. We wanted to get from here to there, but there could be obstacles in getting from here to there. Are you hearing me? Amen. Amen. And we all know about obstacles. And so this represents the obstacles in your journey. And we saw that... Uh, uh, the, that this made their journey much longer and it also made their lives much harder. Amen? How many of that sometimes make their life harder? Amen. It shouldn't be that hard. Come on. Yes. Glory to God. If I don't know it's going to be this hard, I don't know what I'd have done, but we probably would have tried something else. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Hindsight is always what? Hindsight is always 20 point. Yeah. So, uh, but they saw it made their lives harder and as a result the people became very discouraged along the way. How many know things being hard and, and, and things becoming hard can discourage us, and they do discourage us. Yeah. Amen. And so the people were discouraged here along the way, and they were having a problem with that. And the lesson here is the best way to escape a problem is to solve it. Yeah. That sounds very profound. That between you and your promised land, you'll face issues that have to be resolved. 
Remember, we declared that last week. Issues, there are some things that have to be resolved. Say have to be. Have to be. It's got to be. It cannot continue and go on and on and on. Amen. God has seen some things that are going on and on and on. And he wants you to know that there is resolution. And there is a solving to that problem. That it will not continue forever. Amen. There is a cycle to everything. I said there is a cycle to everything. And I believe the cycle of that problem is coming to an end. Glory to God. Amen. I believe the Lord is, is moving in that place. And he knows what's going on. And so the lesson is, amen, the best way to escape is to solve it. And that between you and your promised land, you'll face issues that have to be resolved. Amen? We're not going to get there just because we look good. Amen. You're all pretty and handsome. Uh, no, but we some things have to be resolved. And so we saw that there was a difference. Just kind of going over a little bit where we're at. We saw there was a difference between solution and resolution. The Lord spoke to me about that. He said, solution is simply knowing what to do, simply solving the problem. You know what the problem is, and you know the solution. Amen. That's solution. That's solving it. Now, resolution, I didn't realize there was a real difference. That's what we shared a bit on this last time. Amen. Resolution, according to Oxford Dictionary, we saw, is making up one's mind to solve the problem, and that's a problem. On top of problem many times. Amen. Come on. We can know what the solution is, but we can't pull the trigger, so to speak, to solve the problem. We can't make up our mind. I should do this. I should do this. I should go there. I'm not going there. I believe we do this. No, I'm not sure about that. When you get in that, we all have those, those times, but God is wanting us to, he wants to resolve some issues. Come on. Where we thought this was it, and we probably might have been what should have been done solving that problem. Yes. But because we hesitated and procrastinated yes. and didn't do it, we saw last time that that problem can move into a dilemma. Yes. Yes. Right. Amen. Amen. And come into other things that we'll talk about here. We'll just remember here in just a minute. So we, we're. We're facing issues that have to be resolved. Yes. So re recognizing obstacles for what they are, and obstacles are temporary tests of our resolve, our ability, and our faith in God. But it won't do us much good if we don't know how to handle them. Amen. 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 And so we're learning, we're, we're, together we're discussing the seven keys to problem solving since we all have some. The first key we saw was to recognize that you'll always have a problem. There will always be problems in life. I know that gives you the warm feeling, but that's just the way it is. There's always going to be problems. Amen. And we saw that the problem that's not anticipated we saw is a problem. Yes. Amen. We're going to have problems with something or someone at some time. It's going to become a problem. Amen. You think you're going to live problem free? Uh, you won't be, well, you know what I'm talking about. And so the good news is, was that good news? is that every problem is an opportunity for God to show himself strong on our behalf. I said every problem is God's opportunity if we see it that way. Amen? And it's an opening for God to do exceedingly abundantly, super abundantly, above all we can ask or think of. Or we think it's three twenty. So Lord, I thank you in everything I give you thanks. I thank you for this problem that seems to be unsolvable. You're going to do it super abundantly, exceedingly, above all I can ask or think. I want you to begin to see that problem solved. I want you to begin to see God resolving something that has refused resolution. Something that you've been hard to make up your mind about. And when you're dealing with people and you're dealing with situations, it's very difficult. You know that. Then be careful of the decisions you make. Lives are at stake. Relationships. Amen. So, I don't have to go into a lot of detail. There you are already thinking about what you deal with. A lot of times it's family. F-A-M-I-L-Y. We are family. Yeah. 
Well, we're about not to be found if you don't get this thing straightened out here real quick. No, we're always going to be family. Come on. I said, we're always going to be family. All right. Huh? I said, we're always going to be family. Good, bad, or ugly. You are family. We all love you. Hallelujah. That's right. God loves you. Yes. Praise himself. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, you some of you are laughing, but you all been kind of crazy at times. You know, look at some of you. You don't think they had the crazy at times in their life? Oh. The ones that look the most calm, probably the most crazy in their younger life. And amen. Yeah. Sometimes right now, too. Amen. Yeah. Don't look good on Sunday morning. Amen. Our hair is down, we, you know, but we know it was straight. Okay, we'll be there. Uh-huh. So your problem today, the problem you're facing today is have to do for God to do for you. And to do for me, or through us, for me, or through me, what we can't do for ourselves. This is my opportunity, it's our opportunity, God, to do it for me, or do it through me. Say, do it for me, or do it through me. Either way, God's doing it. I said God's doing it. Well, I feel the Holy Spirit. He wants you to know that he's on top of this situation. He wants you to be encouraged that he's seen you. He's, he's, he's been with you. He knows what you've been through, what you've been going through. He knows the confusion. He knows the turmoil. He knows all that he's been doing. And he's moving in those areas now to bring souls to Amen. So, Lord, that was the first key. Amen. The second key, we saw that you must identify the real problem. We saw that there is a distinction between problems and predicaments. We saw that a problem can turn to a dilemma or a predicament. But, and the difference there, a problem is something you can do something about. If you can't do something about it, then it's not a problem. It's a predicament. Let me give you an example. That means it's something that must be coped with or something that must be endured. I might mean, know there's some things that we're happy to cope with and endure with because we didn't solve the problem when we could have solved it. And we probably all had some situations like that. And so now we're in a situation where we're having to, it's gone to, from a problem to a predicament to a dilemma. Now it's, any decision you make is not good either way. Amen. But thank God for God. And he helps us even in those situations. Amen. Even in a predicament. That means that it's something that you got to deal with, something that has been there. But when you treat a predicament as a problem, that's when we, we become frustrated, we become angry, we become discouraged, we become, we become depressed. Uh-huh, I don't know about you, but when you treat a predicament like it's something you go say, you just get frustrated. Anybody ever got frustrated? Amen. I know you got angry once or twice. Amen. I'm talking to some real people out here, not, Amen. not some Christianettes. Hallelujah. And then you can go from anger to depression. Depressed over it, amen. And so you waste energy and make bad decisions. And then when all of your attempts fail, we, we give up and we see ourselves as victims. Yes. Man, victims of circumstance. Yes. And that's not a good place to be. We saw as an example, if I can give you the example again, some of you may remember, some of you weren't here. If you're married, perhaps you're a morning person, amen, and your spouse is a night person, or vice versa. I may know that is a predicament. Yeah. You can't change it. I don't care what you do. Rain bells, do all the stuff you want to do, beat on drums. You can't change the way people are wired internally. I know we try. We work our best on it to rewire them. And if you try, <laughs> you and your spouse will experience a lot of conflict, yeah. and there will be no resolution. 
except get out of here and let me alone. Let me sleep. Don't be singing a song and humming. Amen. Zippity do God. <laughs> kind of felt someone the other day because someone we love very much. And, well, you just talk a lot in the morning. You know, that's it. God, you just, you know, just give me a break. You know, let me go to the refrigerator before you know you. Before you zippity do die me, you know. And, Oh, we having a wonderful day. I know I'm not even open yet, and you want to be you know. <laughs> Plenty of sunshine in my way. Well, I'm not ready for the sunshine. It's too dark. So, <clears throat> Hallelujah. However, though, there's good news here. Your difficulty in finding ways to spend time together, in spite of whichever one you are, one person or not, because of your different bits is a problem that can be solved. You can find ways to get together. You can find ways to work around it. Amen? You can find ways to be quiet in the morning, not be banging doors. <laughs> Opening windows. Put the blinds up. Be quiet. <laughs> I'm trying to help somebody. I'm not sure I am, but And there, and there was another thought, too, if you could handle two of these, that sometimes God will deliver you from a bad situation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, God will deliver us sometimes from a bad situation. Come on. Yeah, he's delivered me more than once from a bad situation. And there's other times he will use it to develop your character oh, yeah. and make you more like Christ. I don't, I don't like How many are overdeveloped right now? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Over is goes over to up. Amen. Hallelujah. It seems like he takes more than bad situations to develop our character and make us more like Christ. Is that? Am I, am I on it? See, God has situations where he allows our life to make the fruit of the Spirit grow. Love, peace, joy, long-suffering, patience. And all the little fruits we have, you know, the little ones. You'll come watch you know, the little fruits. And so, God knows how big the fruit is in your life in those areas. How many know sometimes the fruit of patience is not very big? It's, it's kind of shriveled up, kind of, yeah. Long suffering? That's another issue. Amen. Long suffering means what? Just what it says. Long suffering. I don't like long suffering, you. I'm tearing that page out right there. I'm trying to get another page in my life. I don't like that one. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. But we saw, you know, in, in all of what God is doing, we saw that from David, it's beautiful how David said that God can turn our sides into a song. Whew. Wow. You ever catch yourself just saying, man, this is something. You're something. Whatever the something is. Yeah. You just have a sign. Just it's like, like it's almost automatic. Just, wow. God can take that sign, turn it into a song. And I believe that's what he's working on now. I want to share with you just a couple more keys if I might. On how to solve problems. Key number three. Third, you must face the problem. We must face the problem. Uh, and this can be difficult, amen? Because of denial and uh, fear and uh, intimidation sometimes, manipulation, uh, all the things that come into having to face a problem that we really don't want to face sometimes. Come on. Yeah. When, and Nehemiah, when Nehemiah was threatened by his enemies and some of his friends told him to hide in the temple, he replied, he replied in Nehemiah 6 and 11, he said, should a man like me run away? Or should someone like me go into the temple to save his life? He says, I will not go. Come on. I'm not going to be intimidated by that. I'm not going. Amen? If somebody's going, well, I hope it ain't you. But don't let that door hit you with a good Lord. Uh, 
No, that's not the attitude we want to have. Amen? Yeah. He didn't say that, but when he said, I will not go, he might as well have said that. Amen. They were trying to get him to go. And we want to take a look at that. And as a result, Nehemiah rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem in two months, which was an amazing feat. And years ago, you might re re remember this, there was a popular television commercial and about addiction and abuse, and it showed a typical family at home. The children were playing, the mother was vacuuming, the father was reading the paper. The newspaper. They could have been a conventional family anywhere, except for one problem. There was a huge elephant in the room with them. And even though they could see it was making life difficult, and they had to work around it, they seemed to be ignoring it and pretending it didn't exist, wasn't it? And the act gave rise to the slogan, you know what it is, there's an elephant in the room. And it applies to problems we don't want to address. And so we pretend everything is fine. We typically react to a problem in four ways. We flee. We flee it. We try to escape, but the problem always follows us. Yeah. That's why it doesn't do it good to move somewhere else because you have to take you with you. And the problem is not always everybody else. Come on. So now you're bringing it with you. Yeah, well. Hallelujah to God. And the solution is not to marry somebody else because you've taken the problem back into that person. Amen. All right, I believe that blow. I can feel that. It was killing the anointing right there. It's not going to another church. I'm looking for a perfect church. Well, if you find a perfect church, as soon as you walk in, that does it for that church. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's it. <laughs> That's not that. He's given me the spirit of love 
And he's given me the spirit of power. And he's given me the spirit of a sound mind. Yes. Right. I don't know about you, but I've had to claim a sound mind more than once. Yeah. People drive me crazy. <laughs> oh, they don't drive you crazy. Okay, it's okay. It's because you're already crazy. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> man do to me that God won't help me, huh? Come on. Amen. What can happen that God won't see me through? God, I don't have to panic. I don't have to go into war. What am I going to do? We have to do this, we have to do that. We need to just stop. God, help me. Some of the greatest words you can say when you're in a crisis and things are bearing down on you and the enemy bringing fear in the situation is say, Jesus, whispering on your breath, Jesus, I trust you. I trust you. Jesus, Somebody say with me, Jesus, Jesus, I trust you. Yeah, I trust you. God, when you do that, God, God can do something in the worst of situations. Amen. In the most fearful of summons, in the most fearful of announcements, the most fearful of possibilities. Amen. Jesus, I trust you. Help me. Amen. That's the best prayer we could ever pray. Help me, Jesus. God is a helper. He's listening for that prayer. Amen. You're not by yourself. I said you're not alone and you're not by yourself. God is with you. God is with us. Emmanuel. God with us. Oh, he's with you. He's with me. The fourth key of the seven keys, and that might be the last key possibly that I share with you and may not be able to handle any more keys. Amen. Hallelujah. The fourth key is to evaluate the problem carefully and prayerfully. Evaluate it. Here's what King Solomon said in Proverbs 14, 15. He said about reacting impulsively instead of, instead of taking time to get all the facts. Yeah. I mean, no, it's easy to go off half cocked, half, you know. Oh, yeah. Maybe you hear a little bit, man, and oh, God, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Take time. To get all the facts. Okay, that didn't sound good. Let me, let's, let's, let's look at this carefully and let's look at it prayerfully. You can look at it carefully and not prayerfully yeah. and try to solve it in your own strength, which is a natural human response. Yeah. But God answers prayer. I said, God answers prayer. Yeah, exactly. and if you'll ask Him, He showed me more than once what to do when I didn't know what to do. Okay. When I was in situations that if God didn't show me what to do, it was not going to be good. Are you hearing me? Yes. I mean, this thing was not good. The situation was at a, a crisis point. Yes. Amen. I don't have to name some of those situations with you. You probably know some of them yourself, but they can get real dicey. They can get real serious, real quick over problems. Yes. Family especially. Amen. Yes. And, uh, and I tell you, you, just, well, praise God. Hallelujah. You just don't want your stuff thrown on the sidewalk. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. okay, I just went there. That's okay. God spoke to me one time in a serious situation. I think he said, he said, you know, son, he said, you have a gift for making a bad situation worse. He said, it's not a gift I want, God. I don't want that gift. He said, you got the gift with your mouth. Oh! He said, if you would just... You'd make it worse. It was already bad. You just put some more logs on the fire. Now that thing is roaring. <laughs> Whereas before, you might have had a chance. There might have been a possibility. Ooh. Come on. But now you have ratcheted it up. Yeah. And the devil is having the field day. Oh, yeah. Now we got to go through stuff we don't want to go through. I go through enough I have to go through. I don't want to go through stuff I don't have to go through. Amen? So, okay, I got rid of that gift. I, don't I know you don't have any gifts like that. Don't make a bad situation worse. Amen. Ask God to help. 
And sometimes we don't know what to do. Isn't that true? Amen. I just I had to finally humble myself and say, God, I don't know what to do. I don't know what the problem is. How many know, many times we don't know what the problem is. How many know, now I'm not thinking on men, but how many know men have a real deal with this? We think everything is all right. What's the problem? You know, if you would just act right, everything would be okay. So, we know what you're talking about, Pastor. It's kind of a man thing, kind of a simple thing. And so in our simpleness, we think there's nothing wrong here. But how many know when there's something wrong, that beautiful partner is going to let you know there's something wrong? And until you understand there's something wrong, there's going to be something wrong. I learned that the hard way. I thought, boy, if you just get over it. That will ratchet it up right there. Just say those words. Get over it. Yeah. Yeah. They'll get over on you. They won't get over it. And so, uh, I thought, well, what's the solution? I said, if something doesn't happen, this is going to be the result. Have you been in a situation like that where if something doesn't happen here, we can't live in this situation. God has not called us to all that turmoil and all that confusion and all that mess. God has called us to peace. And so something has to happen to break that spirit of tension and, 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 and that strife. And it usually takes someone that has to humble themselves and try to help us. I know it helped me. Humble ourselves, even have to get on our knees, possibly, God. Come on. Forbid that. Well, we won't forbid it, but you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Human nature does not want to get on its knees or humble itself for anything. No. I want you to humble yourself, but not me. Not wrong with me. Okay. Okay, it's just me. That's okay. I, I can. I'm preaching it. And so, in the crux of that, of something that the enemy is dead in the midst of, I mean, it's just gone from bad to worse, and something's got to break. Something is going to give. You know what I'm talking about. When I got down on my knees, I'll just talk about me, is that okay? Well, I can talk about you. You want to talk about you? Don't worry about you. Don't worry about you. I said, Lord, I don't know what to do. you got to show me what to do. Do you know in less than 10 seconds, if they take that long, God showed me just what to do. And it involved humbling myself. See, pride is something we never know we have. Are you hearing me? Proud people don't know they're proud. Arrogant people don't know they're proud. They're arrogant. Yeah. And so God has to, we have to humble ourselves and say, God, show me. What do I do with this? And the Lord showed me exactly what to do. And it, it pulled the blood. It, 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 it unlit the fuse that was burning. Huh? It was getting real close to the bottom. And God stopped. Cut it off. Now, can I share one more little thing a little deeper? We have to be careful. I'm just talking maybe to us, maybe even to two, but first of all, uh, we think that just because we humble ourselves and get something right, that everything's okay. Uh, no. Sometimes everything is not okay. Too much has been said. Too many sparks and flames have been burning here. We've got to give this thing time to die down. Are you, are you with me? And so we can't go in thinking, well, everything should be nice. Now, what's, what's the problem now? That's going to cause it to flame back up again. Amen? Are you, are you, are you catching it? Are you feeling it? We have to let, give God time to heal. We've got to give God time to heal the other person sometimes. Sometimes we've hurt the other person. We've been hurt. We've got to give time to heal that wound and not think just because we got it right that it's all healed. No, sometimes it takes a little time. If you wait on God and let God work in it, amen, God will work it. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. You did what you had to do. Let God do what he's going to do. You're not responsible for the other person anyway. They're responsible. You can't, you can't make them do anything. You, we know that. Come on, Pastor. We don't even try that. We tried that. How'd that work for you? Not very good. 
Because God is not going to fix each other. Huh? As a matter of fact, we get mad if he even think I need to be fixed. Huh? You think I need to be fixed? I'll fix you. <laughs> Praise God. Am I, am I speaking to anybody? Yes. Am I helping anybody? Yes. These are just some little pearls and nuggets that I gave along the way. Amen? Amen. And so we've got to, we can't be reacting impulsively. It's going to take a time to get all the facts. Amen? Yes. And the simple believe anything, uh, Proverbs says, but the prudent give thought to their steps. The simple believe anything. Be careful what you believe. Don't believe anything. To answer before listening, he says, that is folly and shame. Proverbs 18, to, to, to answer before listening. Amen. To answer something, you just heard about one word, and then you already got a response to it. Come on. We need, that's folly. We need to listen. God help us to become good listeners. That can be a problem. Because usually when somebody's talking, we're not hearing anything they say. We are thinking about what we're going to say or what they're saying, and we can't wait to say it. Come on, am I? <laughs> and so we have to we have to make ourselves okay. Listen, what are you really saying? What are you really saying to me? Amen. I don't want to answer before I listen, and that's that's probably one of that's been one of my biggest challenges is to is to listen more than three seconds. I'm a good listener for three seconds. I'm a good listener until you say something I don't like. Huh? I'm a good listener until you come off the wall. Well, nobody, nobody does have to hear the first No, we got to listen. Amen. Don't answer before listening. Really listen. People that listen, people appreciate it when you listen. When you won't listen, that's when things blow up. Amen. Amen. You're not listening to me, you're not hearing me. And then we tell them, you're not hearing me. Now we have two people not hearing each other. Yes. How about we have? We have nobody here enough. Hello. We know where that gets us. That gets us at opposite ends of the house. Amen. <laughs> okay. Am I getting too close here to home? Uh -huh. I mean, oh, when patients are in pain, they want a quick relief. Uh huh. But the doctor knows that the pain must be diagnosed correctly in order to prescribe the right medication and make the patient whole. For you, that means asking yourself who or what caused this problem. I mean, you know, sometimes we have things going on, we can't even remember what the problem was. I can't even remember what we were arguing about. I'm trying, really trying to remember. What was that? Have you ever done that? Oh, yes. Yeah, some of us don't have any problem remembering. It's big enough. Amen. But, uh, yeah. Who or what caused this problem? And am I making a mountain out of a molehill? And has it the potential to do real damage? Or will I have forgotten about it this time next week? If you don't diagnose the problem correctly, you'll have to go back and start all over again. And at that point, the solution will probably be more painful and more costly. We've got to diagnose the problem correctly. Take time. Amen? What? Who and what has really caused this problem? I mean, no other people can cause problems and cause problems for you. Yeah. And then when their problem is resolved or they're out of the picture, now you're left with the problem. Uh, <laughs> and that's a favorite trick of the devil. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, we're all right now, but now we got this over here. Good God. So we need to really, you know, who and what caused this problem? Amen. And can I just know one little more thing about that? Amen. Sometimes we have to be careful we don't take offense of others' offense. Yeah. They're offended. They want you to be offended with them. Mm -hmm. 
because they want, you know, misery loves company. Nobody wants to go alone. I want to get somebody on my side so we can take care of you. Amen. But there's something about offense. They say it's the devil's bait. I have seen more than one case where offenses have been resolved through that particular person. That was taken care of, that was done, whatever was happening. And the person who took up the offense for that other person, they continue with the offense. Causing more problems. Be careful you don't take up other people's offense. Yes, what's been done is wrong. And I'll help you all I can. But I'm not going to let offense work in my heart. It's the bait of Satan. Amen. Offense leads to anger, leads to resentment, leads to all kinds of things. And I'm to walk in love. We're to walk with faith. Faith works by love. We, we're supposed to God help us stay in love. I don't know about you, but my prayer lately has been God help me to stay in love because there's a bunch of yahoos in our world today that just Right now, I'm not feeling anything, but I'm not feeling anything like love. Have you been there? Oh, yeah. You hear somebody talk, you hear somebody do something, say something, especially on that one eyed monster, that TV. <laughs> <laughs> God, I find myself getting, if, I don't, if I'm not careful, I've got to go back and say, God, help me to walk in love, help me to think right, help me to pray for them. Because right now, if I wasn't careful, I could hurt her. Okay. Now, is that just me or you? I mean, emotions are emotions. Oh, yeah. Come on, emotions are emotions. Yeah. Don't care how much I love you. Yeah. With what's going on, if you say crazy things and do crazy things, there are times where your love walk just falls apart and all of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I can hurt you. Yeah. I don't want you. I don't want these feelings. Amen. Yeah. Woo. Glory to God. I didn't plan on going here this morning, but I feel God is helping us solve problems. Because there's no fun in having problem and the same 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 problem. Now we got the same problem. No resolution, no solution. How long can we go through that before something explodes? Amen. We're only human, amen? Mm -hmm. I said we're only human. Yeah. There's only so much we can take. Yeah. Yeah. And God knows that too. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. So we've got to diagnose the problem, amen? Mm -hmm. Correct. Mike Levette, former United States Secretary of Health and Human Services, said this. He said, there is a time in life of every problem. There is a time in the life of every problem when it is big enough to see, yet small enough to solve. There is a time. Big enough to see it. But now it's small enough to solve it. Amen? Yeah. And the key, excuse me, to finding the right time. The key is to find the right time. Somebody say the right time. Right time. Right time. And be patient. Be patient. When implementing the solution. If you're implementing the solution. I know these are things God is helping us with. Inexperienced people expect problems to be settled instantly. Let me say it again. Inexperienced people expect problems to be settled instantly. Amen. And you got to be careful sometimes. It didn't come instantly. It's going to be solved instantly. So don't think just by one little word that you say that not everything is solved. That's arrogance and pride right there. Do you think you can solve something with me? With just one little word or something? Is that? Yeah. More complex. You know, there's more going on than that. Amen? Amen. So the key is find the right time. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. How many know at midnight at night is not the right time when you're going to sleep to solve a problem? <laughs> the problem we need to solve right now is get some sleep. Yeah. Now, if we can't stand each other, then someone, something got to happen there, but then we ought to at least try to get some sleep tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Then I go again, huh? <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Amen. Amen. Okay. Inexperienced people, they expect them to be, problems to be instantly settled. 
But experienced people, so I say experienced people, they're like the master sculptor who keeps striking the marble block yeah. with steady blows with the hammer. Hmm. They keep working on it. How many have something you got to keep working on? Yeah. yeah, I hope you don't take this literally about the hammer. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Pastor, can, can you come over here quickly? Uh, someone's always going around here with a hammer. Amen. Yeah. He heard you Sunday. I said, oh. No. No hammers. Amen. Yeah. Just talking about the sculptor who doesn't try to do everything instantly and yeah. expect everything to be okay. Just right now because I said something. Yeah. Like and they just have to plant a seed. Yeah. Just to plant a seed of forgiveness or plant a seed of you know whatever we need to plant. Yeah. And let it let it work. Let it grow. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. So unlike the rookie who expects to split the stone with one blow, <laughs> he knows if he just keeps working at it, he'll eventually succeed. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Come on. Somebody shout, keep working on it. Keep working on it. Keep working on it. Keep working, keep working, keep working. Come on, shout again. Keep working at it. Keep working at it. Don't give up on it. Don't give up on it. If it's worth all that effort and energy, it's worth working on. Hallelujah. Well, the Lord said it's worth working on it. Don't give up on it. Don't give up. I know that it's hard to find not to give up. You throw your hands up. But God says, don't give up. Keep working on it. It's worth it. It will be worth it. I hear the Lord say. There is a solution. There is a resolution. Don't give up. Amen. So, our four keys as we close. Recognize you always have problems. As long as you're alive. Number two, you must identify the real problem. Three, you must face the problem. And four, evaluate the problem carefully and prayerfully. Amen. Amen. We have three more keys, and I can guarantee you the best is still ahead. Amen. Amen. So, if you didn't like this, stay tuned. The three more, the three last ones will, will bless you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Good God, I praise you. You got anything like that. Hallelujah. Come on, would you stand with me? Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, I just feel the presence of the Lord in here right now. I'm so glad there's an answer and there's solutions. And amen. And I don't have to stay frustrated and angry and depressed. And God has an answer to every problem. And I just hear the Lord saying, bring that problem to the cross. Every problem was so solved at the cross. At the cross, at the cross, when I first saw the light. And the burden of my heart was rolled away. It was there by faith that I first saw the light. Amen. And now, and now, I am happy all the day. Hallelujah to God. God wants you happy all the day. You were meant to be happy. Amen? Amen. Joy is here, the song said this morning. Joy is here. Amen. Sorrow what endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. You have a morning coming. Whoever I'm speaking to, in that problem, in that situation, your morning is as sure as I'm speaking right now based on the word of God and what God is speaking. That he is moving to resolve and solve that problem. It's going to show you just what to do. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, thank you. We bring, we bring whatever problem that might be. That one that you're thinking about right now. That, that, that one that you, you may be dealing with. Uh, maybe you're not dealing with any problem right now, but one may come up tomorrow or in the future, this next week. Father, we want to thank you that you've gone ahead of us and gone before us. You sent your angels ahead of us to bring us into the place that you have for us. You said, no evil shall befall the righteous. We are the righteousness of God. Not our righteousness, but yours. You have given us the robe of righteousness. You've covered us with your righteousness. You've made us right, Lord. I thank you for that. 
and I praise you for it. And I thank you for what you're doing right now in every life. I thank you though the problems of our world grow bigger and bigger and seem to have no solutions, no way out. Your word did declare that the end times there would be problems with no solutions. But you were speaking of the world and that's the truth. You are the solution. Yeah. You are the answer. You are the way, the truth, and the life. You came to give us life and life more abundant. And I thank you for that. You know the devil, the enemy comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. But you've come to give us life and give it more abundantly. So I speak to areas that the enemy has already, the thief has already begun to steal. And now he's already in the second stage of killing that, whatever that is. Yeah. That feelings, those emotions, that love, whatever it might be. I pray it hasn't gone to this third stage. Steal, kill, and destroy. I rebuke destruction. I rebuke the spirit of destruction. I want to thank you that you deliver us from all our destructions. Psalms 103. You forgive all of our iniquities. Every place we've missed it, Father. You forgive us. You heal all of our diseases. Oh, God. And you fill our mouth with good things. Our life with good things. Fill every life with good things this morning. More than they've ever known or could have imagined. Super abundantly. Let them know that you have a good life, good things. That it will not always be a life filled with problems. Those kind of situations. Lord, I thank you. And I praise you that you not only fill our mouth with good things, but you said our youth, our youth is renewed like the eagles. I want to thank you for renewing our youth. For the renewing us, making new, not just in age, but renewing youth in that relationship, renewing, making things new. I make all things new, Jesus said. Father, bring newness and freshness. Father, bring new life, new light, new love. Oh, God, thank you for the things you have prepared for us. I want to thank you for encouraging us and showing us that you have. You said, I have not seen, or ear have heard the things that God have prepared for them. That's us that love Him. Amen. Lord, I thank you who walk after you, your spirit. I want to thank you for what you prepared. I thank you for the best days are ahead of us. We've been through some difficult times. Everyone has gone through hellacious of things that we cannot even, we don't even have words for. If they were to describe, they can only describe the things they have endured and had to suffer, things that they've been through. Father, things that they may be going through. Holy Spirit, I thank you for helping us right now. I thank you for this week of victory. Your name is victory. I want to thank you for solutions that are coming this week. I want to thank you for resolutions. Helping us to make up our mind. Helping us to make the decision. Helping us, showing us what to do. And giving us the courage to do what needs to be done. But Father, let it be what you say. Not what we say. Let it be what you show us, not what we would do. Father, let it not come from our soul, our emotions, but let it come from your spirit. Oh, God, spirit to spirit. And we know that your spirit is love. Thank you for that love. Thank you. We give you a praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.